All right, so we've just looked at ionic bonding in a bonding pair. But like I said before, we want to bring this to a larger three-dimensional structure. And so that's what we're going to do with a second module. And we do that by way of a what's called the modeling or modeling a constant. And so this is basically a constant that gives us the relationship between that isolated ion pair and a pair in a larger crystalline structure. So it allows us to in, in sort of extrapolate uh, and determine what that would be like in a crystal. Um, and so you can kind of think of this in a two dimension, or sorry, a, a one dimensional problem here. So you have a plus minus pair, and then if you keep kind of repeating those, uh, you can imagine that there's going to be, you know, a, an energy between the two, but that can be um, uh, changed by having the other negatives and positives next to it. And the same thing, when we get into a larger three-dimensional crystal structure, which we'll talk about um, in the next uh, chapter, um, you'll see the relationships. And in this case, it becomes more complicated because we have here a, a positive reference and it's surrounded by negatives, but it's also surrounded by positives at slightly longer distances. And then it's also uh, has another set of negatives further apart. And, uh, you know, that goes on uh, basically infinitely. And so we want to account for those and we do so with this modeling constant. So what we do uh, to get this modeling constant, and we're not going to work through all of the calculations here, but I want you to see the, uh, the structure of this. So if we take the sodium chloride or rock salt structure that looks like this, and we think about just a reference point, so a reference ion in the middle, and then the first thing that we're going to look at is the first nearest neighbor ions. It says atoms here, but it's, it's actually ions. And so there are six of them, right? So this um, is coordinated by six closest ions, and those are of the opposite sign. So we're going to look at those. After we've done that, so that's equivalent to kind of looking at the pair. After that, we're going to look at the next nearest neighbor. So these uh, are, are 12 ions, um, and in this case, they're of the same charge, right? So this is the same as, as this, uh, just at a different distance away. And so that will um, be a, uh, you know, a plus plus or a plus or a minus minus um, um, term in that coulombic uh, energy. And then after that, we keep going. So the third nearest neighbor ions are here uh, on the corners. Um, at a much further distance, and again, that would be plus minus or minus plus. In this case, and there are eight of them. And so basically, to get this modeling constant, uh, the, the modeler uh, basically goes through um, all of these varying things, uh, basically as, as far as we need to go to get significant figures. So you can imagine that this number technically keeps on increasing if the crystal is infinite, but at a certain point, the number doesn't uh, significantly change. So it converges to a certain number. All right, so here's the equation for this modeling constant. Um, here I've used this sort of script A to define the modeling constant. You may see a, a different um, representation of it, but it, it, it's, what, uh, it's what this is, and it's what gives us the relationship between an isolated pair and a pair in a crystal. And so to calculate the modeling crystal, uh, sorry, the modeling constant, what we need to do is a summation, right? It's a summation of all of these different nearest neighbors up to the point that we're gonna stop, stop the calculation. And what we have is the same thing we had in our bond equation. So the, the relative charges, Z, uh, Zi and Zj. So I um, is the, the reference, or sorry, um, J is the reference in this case, and then I is what we're summing, so it's all the different relationships. Uh, and so um, uh, J is kind of our reference, I is um, our um, nearest neighbor. So in this case, for the first one, we're looking at uh, the charge of the white species here, the, the lighter ones. 
Um, and then on the bottom, you have um, the uh, the unit charges there. So this should also say I and J as well. So you have charge, the absolute value, and then you have the absolute value on the bottom, and then you have the just the normal version on top. And we sum all of these different uh, combinations along with the radius. So we use a reference radius for this. And so that's going to be the nearest neighbors. So effectively, this distance between the central ion and its nearest neighbor, which is, in effect, the bond distance, we're going to use. So we basically call that R, uh, typically we'd call that R0 to be consistent with the bond energy and bond force curves. And so that is our R0 value. And what we do is we look at the various structures that we have. So this is sodium chloride. And that R0 is equivalent to half the length of the side. right? So that's going to be our connection between the bond distance and the structure and allow us to relate the others. So for example, here, the distance between the central ion and its uh, next closest one here is going to be uh, in relation to R0. And we can use the symmetry of the crystal to determine what that distance is in terms of R0. And so that's what we would do for all of these. We'd keep doing it. Uh, relative charges, uh, absolute value of the relative charges, uh, multiplied by the distance and take the negative of that and sum up all of these combinations that we can have. Um, and that's what's done. So um, in essence, uh, this is done for, um, so here is that bond bonding energy uh, uh, curve we had. Um, if we then add this, add this modeling constant to the end here, um, all of these terms are those summation terms. And here they, they call it alpha. We called it kind of that script A either way. And the end result, uh, when you get the modeling constants, for various crystals, uh, you'll get a number uh, here. So these are the modeling constants for various structures, right? Accounting for those distances between the like and dissimilar charges and doing a lot of these calculations until we get a stable constant. And so that's what we have here. And this, again, allows us to convert the bonding energy for two, uh, a pair of ions, and then a pair in a total um, in the crystal. That's what we have with the summation here. And so, uh, so in general, we don't have to calculate the modeling constants. These are already calculated for various structures and we can look up those values. Okay, I, I wanna make one quick modification. Um, I've talked about the summation, this E sum uh, as the, uh, when we sum the energy uh, using the modeling constant. Uh, but I forgot to mention this lattice energy equation down here because there is a significant difference between uh, this form and what we see down here. And the main difference, if you kind of look through all the terms, um, alpha is the same, the charge and uh, charge of electron, all these constants, uh, this term, they're all the same. But we do have one important difference, and that is this n sub a v, uh, which is a weird way of saying uh, Avogadro's number. So effectively, uh, this is to get um, the lattice energy in terms, uh, in more usable terms, so basically in terms of mole. Um, so these are very similar, but there is this one different uh, difference uh, is the Avogadro, uh, Avogadro's number constant added to the equation above. So I just wanted to, to do that before we get to the um, uh, problem on the next slide. All right, so now what I want to do um, is using what we've just talked about with the uh, modeling constant and the bonding energy, I want us to calculate what's known as the lattice energy. And so um, this is that summation that you saw in the previous uh, the energy equation you saw in the previous slide. So I've given you uh, the modeling constants uh, and some uh, radii from the book. Uh, you're also welcome to uh, to flip around the book if you want. But what I want, to, want you to do is look at sodium uh, chloride and see if you can use 
that equation, which we call the born lande equation, that energy equation, and see if you can calculate what's termed, what that is termed as the lattice energy for uh, an ionic sodium chloride structure. So pause the video, see if you can make that calculation, and then that will be in the quiz as well. So go ahead and write that in the quiz, and then come back and I'll go through uh, the sample calculation for this equation. All right, so let's see if we can now uh, answer the question of calculating the lattice energy using the bon born lande equation for sodium chloride. So I've went ahead and written out some of our constants here. So Avogadro's number, uh, 1 over moles, uh, the charge of an electron uh, in coulombs, and then permittivity of free space uh, in SI units, so farads per meter. Um, so looking at our equation we have for the lattice energy, if we go ahead and write that up here, and this is on the previous slide, we have Avogadro's number, we have the charges of the two species when that becomes in focus, we have the charge of an electron, uh, the uh, modeling constant which we just got done talking about as alpha, and that's going to be over 4 pi permittivity of free space, and then the equilibrium uh, bond distance, and that's all uh, multiplied by 1 over uh, 1 minus 1 over n. So that's our lattice energy uh, equation. And we've got our three constants here. Uh, we know what pi is as well. And so the other things that we need to look at are the charge, modeling constant, and the Born constant, as well as the equilibrium distance. So let's start with the modeling constant. Uh, that was, again, from the table on the previous equation. We can go ahead and write that down for the specific structure that we have. And uh, that was 1.7475, um, as listed on the previous slide. So this is for the sodium chloride structure. Um, these are structure dependent. So keep in mind that if you have another compound that has this type of structure, even if it isn't sodium chloride itself, you can use the same number. It's not dependent on this specific um, NaCl. It's just the NaCl structure. So that's something that we're going to cover in more detail in the next chapter. So we've got the uh, modeling constant. We've got this. Uh, charges, uh, Z1, we can take that to mean uh, sodium. Uh, so we know this is uh, unit charges, so one, one sodium, one chlorine. We did that in the previous uh, slide. Uh, we talked about the transfer of electrons, and there was one, and so positive one, negative one. So we can write this positive one, Z2, as negative one. So we've got basically the entire top, um, and we've got everything but the, the bond distance here um, and N. So for N... Uh, the slide talked about a range of uh, 6 to 12 for, for this. Uh, so this is actually dependent on specific compounds. And so we're just going to approximate this as the middle value, so 8. So if you pick something different, you're going to get a slightly different number, but it won't um, affect the overall number that much. So we're just going to approximate this as 8. So let's get to the last part here. So on the previous slide, uh, it gave you the uh, radii for various compounds. And for sodium chloride, it gave you values for that distance. So it gave you the radius of uh, sodium, and it gave you the radius of chlorine in that structure. So these are the values that we're actually going to use. And so the equilibrium distance is basically the combination of the two, right? So basically, we look at the radius of uh, both of those together. So R, R0 is basically going to be RNA plus RCl 
in that structure because we're assuming that those two are touching. So for uh, we're going to use the Shannon and Pruitt uh, radii uh, for this. Again, there are slight differences if you use a different set, such as the Pauline or the, the minimum uh, electron density. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and use 116 picometers for sodium and 167 uh, picometers for that. Um, and these, when you're talking about picometers, this is 116 times 10 to the minus 9 meters and 167 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And we're doing this in meters because everything else we have is in SI and meter is an SI unit. So we want everything to, to cancel out, such as with this constant up here. So um, plugging in uh, these two values, we're going to get R0. All right, so if we add those two together here, we get 283 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. All right, so now we've got everything in this equation. So at this point, we can basically plug everything in. So I'm going to go ahead and write this all together. So we have Avogadro's number. And I just like to put everything in parentheses. The charges, plus one, minus one. We have the charge of an electron. So then coulombs. And this is squared, so don't forget the square there. And then that's multiplied by the modeling constant. And I'm running out of space, so I'll have to, to add this term uh, in a bit. Uh, 4 pi and then the uh, permittivity of free space, 8.854. And that is... I need to look that up for you. Um, that is, um, uh, sorry about the, the error there. This is uh, 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12. I apologize for that error. We'll fix it. We'll make sure it works out. And that's farads per meter squared. All right, now that we've got that fixed. Um, and then after that, we've got the radius. So 283 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And then this is going to be all multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 8. Because again, we're approximating the Born constant as, Born exponent as 8. So plugging that all in, I'll cut for a second and calculate that for you. And then we'll see what the lattice parameter, or sorry, we'll see what the, the lattice energy is. All right, before I get to the, the answer here, I want to point out a mistake that I made. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and correct this. So picometers to meters is uh, 10 to the minus 12, uh, not 10 to the minus 9. That is, uh, of course, uh, nanometers. So uh, that is my mistake. Uh, so if I correct that uh, throughout this equation here uh, and over here as well, so uh, mistakes happen, so just keep make sure you kind of check things as you're going along. Uh, that would give us a value of minus uh, 750,500, and uh, we'll just round up to 8 uh, in that. Uh, since everything here is in um, uh, SI units, this is uh, an energy, and we have molar energy because we used Avogadro's number up here. So this is going to be joules per mole, and since this is a fairly large number, uh, we tend to see this written as kilojoules. So this is uh, minus 750.5 kilojoules per mole. And if we check that against um, values for uh, the lattice energy of sodium chloride, we see that this is a very good um, approximation for that value. So basically, um, that says that this is a good approximation using the ionic equation that we have developed uh, using this born lande equation. So um, that's the value we're going to get using this equation.